IIS IV SDG talk series represents the inspirational, visionary, and youth oriented conversations that are defining today's India. In this milieu, the current theme for the CEI talk series is Dialogues of Hope Conversations with India's Leading Educational Leaders on how should India's youth address their educational and knowledge needs in today's scenario. With us today is Mr. Dilip George, Principal Doon International School, Dehradun. Mr. George carries with him 19 years of experience in the field of education and has broad industry experience with CBSC, IB, and CIE curriculum at reputed schools across India. He has worked with some of the most renowned international and residential schools of the country, including Vibgyar High School, Baroda, Presidency School, Bangalore, Singapore International School, Mumbai, Canadian International School, and Indus International School in Bangalore. Mr. George, uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for joining us uh, in today's CIIB SDG talk series. I start very quickly with my first question. You know, the whole world is going through uh, uh, what they have termed regularly as an unprecedented scenario. Students are experiencing varied emotions across the country. You know, a few are, of course, vocal about their feelings and fears, but many are not even able to find out what is the right question to ask. In such a situation, the two stakeholders that students look towards for answers or for guidance are parents and the school leaders or their teachers. Now, what would be your advice to the, your teachers and also to the parents on how to respond to students' questions? What should they be telling these students today when they ask them, what do we do? Yeah, see, um... You know, the, the lockdown does not imply that we all get into self-quarantines at home. You know, as long as the parents are able to spend some quality time with the students rather than, you know, the students or the parents being isolated within the same premises. I think uh, it, it's more important that the parents spend quality time and, you know, engage in dialogues with the students at least, you know, uh, at some part of the day. Uh, along with that, you know, we would also expect the teachers also to spend some time, you know, interacting with the students. And this is exactly what we have also initiated at our end, you know, where through our school ERP, the parents and the teachers have been connected, you know, through the app. Now, the teachers have already sent an introductory message to all our students and parents and the students have also started responding to the teachers, not just related to any academic issues, you know, but they can also have a casual one-to-one -one interaction with the teacher to at least ensure that there is a connect between the teacher and the student also. See, the, the lockdown, uh, unfortunately, is going to continue. And I'm sure by the time the, the normalcy comes into place, the school reopening is also going to get uh, further delayed. So we are treating this as, you know, the summer vacation as of now. And uh, it's not that a lot of academic time is being lost. We do not want to convert, you know, the, uh, the home to school at this point of time. Because, you know, overloading the students with a lot of assignments or, you know, expecting them to do their self-study, it's not going to work the right way and especially with the younger lot you know this can work at university levels college levels and all but for school children you know there is a limit to which they would do things independently in our current education scenario so what we are looking at is not purely academic connect with the students you know but guiding them to engage in different activities we have had frequent communication going to the parents also giving them some guidance on how they could timetable their day, how could spend time, you know, little time on the studies, little time on some extracurricular activities, you know, where they could probably get into some uh, fitness workout, they could do some creativity, they could engage in some, you know, cooking at home, cleaning, you know, helping parents at home. So it's, it's about, you know, where we are engaged together in doing things. As you rightly said, you know, the, the varied emotions would definitely be there. For example, let's take a child who's just confined to his room and hooked onto his mobile on the social media or, you know, on the games. Yes, there are going to be issues with that. But as long as, as parents, if we are engaged with the children, seeing what they are doing, 
if you are ensuring that there is quality screen time which is being spent i'm sure all these things would be taken care of excellent i i think the view that you have given about not uh, you know stressing the students at this time is a, a very balanced view given the anxiety they are already going through but in this scenario many other schools that we have talked to they've gone ahead and they've actually you know uh, inducted online teaching into their platforms and uh, there are there are many schools which are going full stream ahead so would your school want to explore this online option going forward because this is one learning case but this is only once in a lifetime case that has come up uh, students may or may not you know like the online thing like like you said but would your school be open to exploring this online initiative see we we did explore you know, the feasibility of introducing something like that but there are challenges you know which we came across you know for example we have teachers who are at remote locations and facing difficulty with the uh, internet and the bandwidth that they have the same is the case with certain students because we have children from all parts of the country we have children from the northeast we have children from the south we have children from remote locations you know where the internet connectivity is not so good you know so to run online and live classes it would be challenge another challenge which we came across is you know some of our teachers also are struggling with just the use of mobile because they don't have a laptop at this point of time uh, or a desktop at home you know so it, it's with the smaller screen it becomes much more difficult to work around with them and it's the same case with some of the parents and the students who do not have you know laptops or desktop at home so you know this is something which we uh, you know uh, had a lot of discussions about and uh, you know we've been discussing with some people who started with this particular option you know with uh, zoom with uh, microsoft teams but then i think uh, you know it was really challenging to have every student of a class to come online at the same time and to run the live classes so at this point of time you know we did not want to you know get into that part and as i said you know we don't want to convert home to school and we don't want to put that pressure on the children and i'm sure see at this point of time if the schools are able to reopen in the you know towards the end of may or june this period would be like the summer vacation so it's not Absolutely. you know too much of academic uh, you know lesson days which are being lost at this point of time sure. yes if it gets extended i'm sure the you know the education boards and you know the mhrd will come up with the revised curriculum and i think they are already ncert is already working on uh, you know a revised curriculum for the time being just for this particular year so if the you know reopening gets delayed maybe the number of school days might get reduced the curriculum might get reduced for this particular year the exam days for the next year might get postponed a little bit so i'm sure all those things will get balanced even now when we are sending assignments to the children you know we have used some common uh, resource areas for the children like diksha and uh, e patshala are two resources you know available for free and from the mhrd and in uttarakhand we follow uh, all the schools follow the ncert curriculum you know so the e books are also available on e patshala so we have given guidance to the parents to download those e books at their own convenience and then you know children could do some reading from that and the assignments have been prepared in a manner where it is like a comprehension for them so they read and then they you know uh, answer the assignments so it will at least keep the children in connect with the course and the curriculum they will be at least aware of certain terms and everything but whenever the school reopens the teachers will have to take them through these chapters through this you know through this course and we cannot you know ignore this period and then move on with the rest of the curriculum that would be injustice to the students as well so that's a that's a fair and reasonable outlook uh, at the same time you know even though the curriculum can be taught in the school in the classroom what about the examinations for students uh, you know if if it is the non board students it's easier to handle those examinations through internal marking but what about the students who are specifically in 12th or even those who are going to 12th you know there's so much anxiety with respect to how they would be graded they, some of them have given some exams some have not given the other exams and now they have to find out universities in the future to go out to the 
will foreign universities take them will foreign universities not take them it, it's a it's a very uh, confusing scenario for these 12 plus students how would you suggest should be the strategy right now for a student in 12 who's just about to pass out who's just maybe given half his exam and he's missed out the remaining half what should he do what should, what is he what should he expect yeah see fortunately i think the class 12 students most of them have finished all their core subjects uh, it's only the uh, additional subject or you know one uh, probably core subject uh, like say for commerce business studies is one subject which is left out and the board has uh, planned to uh, reschedule that exam even though certain subjects the board has decided not to conduct the exams also Yes. you know so that is one relief for the students currently the second part you know we have also given guidance to the students we have a career uh, guidance cell so we have given guidance to our students to start exploring what they want to do uh, for the ones who are planning to continue their higher studies in india definitely they should start exploring with the universities and connect with their admission teams because most of these universities are you know uh, working online connecting with the students also uh similarly with uh, you know abroad education also we have given guidance to the students we have connected them with some of the admission offices uh, recently we had a um, uh, interaction with the bond university in australia so they are also planning to share certain you know resources with us which can be shared with the current batch of class 12 and uh, we should help them you know with their preparation on how to explore education abroad this being a you know issue which is globally affecting everyone i'm sure everyone is going to be concerned about the future of these children and their admissions and everything not just the indian education boards but also the foreign universities because for them also the, this is the right peak time for the intakes and unfortunately you know nothing is happening and there are a lot of apprehensions building about whether it is safe to travel abroad now you know especially during this particular year for the studies but uh, you know i'm sure these universities are also taking all possible measures to give that confidence to the children and keep them you know within the uh, consideration limits so that they do not lose out on this opportunity sure sure so the you know the you, you are very motivating for students where if they were to understand this perspective they would be really uh, you know possibly they would have more a more positive outlook but the feedback that we are getting from uk universities and canadian universities not so much from american but right now it's mm. these are the initial times the feedback is mm -hmm. that they are postponing their 2020 admissions especially mm. the winter admissions so okay. uh, if a student who's you know just passed out and was hoping to go to uk canada or you know overseas to these good university and suddenly he realizes that he won't be able to make it there at least not this year and you know in the indian subcontinent the concept of losing a year has a very significant effect so how mm. would you advise a student to handle if such a scenario arises that he or she is not able to go to his foreign university yep. of choice see i think it uh, it would be fair enough for them to engage or you know take this as a break year for you know their uh, preparations for the next academic session which many children do actually uh, you know for example someone who is aspiring to get into an iit or something and wants to prepare or devote time for their uh, entrance preparation there are children who take that break year you know uh, even in india and i'm sure the same thing can uh, be applicable for the students who want to pursue their education abroad but in the meantime what they could do is to uh, maybe enroll themselves for some short term courses online courses uh, yeah. you know there are uh, even free courses available uh, on a lot of websites like this coursera and all these you know so the, you know this i think should engage the children and give them that time to start preparing for it and then take that opportunity next year there's there's no harm in that excellent uh, i think that that's what they should do uh, i you know my final question is probably a more personal oriented question how has the situation affected you personally how have you handled this completely new scenario uh, see it was a, a bit of a, a surprise for us you know we had our borders with us and uh, we were keeping a check on the situation on a daily basis and fortunately we managed to uh, send all our boarders uh, back home safely 
just the day before the lockdown you know that includes children even from thailand you know so we had to take a lot of uh, last minute measures to uh, provide them with medical certificates and all those things because otherwise when they land up in thailand they would have gone into 14 days of quarantine you know so uh, but fortunately touchwood all our children reached home safely and uh, you know i think that was the right thing for us at that point of time uh we have been in connect with the teachers also uh, i stay on the school campus you know so i have a lot of time and uh, resources available to me which i can utilize and share it with the teachers uh, and in the meantime they are also able to guide the students there are few teachers who are available on the campus so they do not have any uh, you know uh, challenges with the technology or the uh, you know internet available you know uh, connectivity and all those Uh, but we are trying to do our best to engage with the parents and the students uh, frequent communication going on uh, i have been sending some uh, video recordings with the parents with my message you know uh, maybe letters and certain suggestions which we keep sending to the parents so uh, i think you know see everyone is looking forward to have some connect or some interaction with people around you know even though the schools are closed down uh the apprehensions as you said you know amongst especially the 10th and the 12th students are a little yes. more because what will happen to their boards how much syllabus will be covered and all those things so keeping that also in mind what we did is we have uh, you know collated certain guidelines for class 10 and class 12 students uh with the question paper blueprint uh, then we shared the syllabus of all the uh, subjects with them and we have given them the guidance on how they should use this time to acquaint themselves with the blueprints of the question paper for their subjects as well as the syllabus so that they know that this is what they are required to learn because that is the basic thing which we see very often that the children miss you know they they just go with the class with the flow learn what is taught in the class and then you know appear for the board exams so this period we wanted them to just utilize to understand what are they learning for their boards how the question paper format is going to be and the third thing which we have asked them to do is to start writing or preparing short notes for themselves for all their core subjects because subjects like english hindi or most of the children they manage to do well in that but subjects like science you know uh, maths and social science in 10th and when it comes to 12th you know physics chemistry bio accountancy business studies so all these core subjects we have asked the students to start preparing short notes and write and learn and teachers are also simultaneously sending them some notes to work with so you know we are trying to take care of every age group separately similarly for the primary we have given them some activities you know some fun games that they can do Uh, at home you know certain activities which the parents can do and it ultimately leads to the learning also so it's it's a balance of these things that we are trying to do excellent uh, mr dilip george it has been a pleasure to talk to you over these various issues you know the covid issue is something that uh, has never been seen by anyone leave alone school students and these students uh, i have seen have the tenacity to handle quite a lot of hardship and quite a lot of uh, you know uncharted territory in this uh, dynamic scenario it's a pleasure to meet school leaders like you to share these thoughts and views which can be promoted across the indian school community uh, through the cei ivs gg talk series and uh, in the dialogue of hope team i hope this current situation gets over much sooner than later thank you mr dilip josh uh, we'll connect thank with you, you so much, hopefully connect with you much Thank you. We'll connect with you later uh, for another talk. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much for your time. Bye bye.